Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. So for those of you who are joining us, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, real quick, um, as folks start to sign in, if you could please let us know that you can see us. You can also see the screen and um, you can see and hear us um, in the Q&A chat box, please. Um, again, let us know that you can hear and see. Um, yeah, in the Q&A chat box or the chat box, that would be wonderful. And we'll get started very soon. Great, 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 great. While we're waiting for a few more folks to sign in, uh, we're going to do a test run. Um, for those of you who are in attendance, if you could, in the Q&A chat box, not the chat box, but the Q&A chat box in Zoom, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. Again, in the Q&A chat box. California, Cincinnati, London, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Zimbabwe, Georgia, Indonesia, Florida, Massachusetts, very cool, New Jersey, all over the place, awesome. Um, raise of hands, um, do we have any parents in attendance for today? Okay, I'm going to lower hands. Um, do we have um, any students interested in transferring to RISD in attendance? Okay, uh, going to ask a few more questions. Uh, do we have any seniors, current seniors? Okay, cool. I'm going to lower hands. Do you have any juniors? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so um, wonderful. So I think it's good that we can get started. Yeah. Okay, let me close out of this. Close out of that. Um, by the way, folks, um, if you have any questions, um, as the presentations are um, in progress, uh, feel free to send your questions into the Q&A chat box and uh, we can address them um, as the presentations are happening, but also we can address some of the questions at the very end of the presentations. Uh, so we'll have a Q&A chat session at the very end. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. So hi everyone, my name is Antonio Peters. I'm one of the admissions officers here at RISD. I'm also a graduate of RISD 2004 from the illustration department. And I'd like to welcome you all to the Open RISD Residence Life and Student Activities webinar. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to pass it over to my colleagues to introduce themselves. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Forty. I'm the director of Residence Life. Happy to um, join you today um, and also uh, to have an opportunity to introduce Dan Murphy, the associate director for residential education. Dan oversees uh, a number of people in our office, all of whom are here for the support of students living on campus. And Dan's going to talk extensively about that. Um, but I just want to say hello and join you. Yeah, say hi, Dan. I was gonna say, hi, I'm coming right back. I'll pass it to you, Erica. <laughs> hi, everybody. My name is Erica Paradise. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm the director of the Center for Student Involvement. I'll be talking with you about clubs and orgs, athletics, our fitness center, and some service and experiential learning. Um, as Kevin said, I'm Dan. I work in Residence Life, um, so I guess I will kick it off. Um, Right, Antonio? Let's see. All right, so you should be able to see this uh, screen. So I'm here to talk a little bit about residence life um, and what it means to live on campus here at RISD. Um, for those of you who are interested in potentially coming to RISD, um, if any questions come to you throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop them into the Q&A um, and we'll get to those um, at the end of the presentation. 
Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about like who are we, who is Residence Life, who works in Residence Life, what support systems and services do we provide. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what does it mean to live on campus and what does the community look like on campus. Um, and then we'll go into more of like the nitty gritty of probably what you really want to know, which is, you know, what does housing look like, what types of rooms do we have and what comes in, you know, residence halls. Um, but before we begin, I want to reiterate that all of the information we're about to go over today is available on our website at housing.risd.edu. So if after this presentation, you wanna learn a little bit more, you wanna watch some videos, um, see some more photos, things like that, um, head to the website, everything is, is on there. It's a great resource. So first off, who are we? Who are the people who work in this office um, and help you, you know, transition to, to living on campus, living away from home for many of you for the first time? Um, so we have a, a, a vast network of people who work in residence life, um, who are here to support you as you transition to RISD, transition to your academics, transition to, you know, living in Providence, Rhode Island, um, and college. So first off, we have our professional staff members who live in the residence halls with you. They're called community coordinators. So they're full-time professional staff members. They live in apartments in the residence halls. Um, and they're kind of there to, to help you with anything that you need. Um, they do a lot of programming. They help make sure policies are being followed. They are a great resource um, for you when you're here. Um, and then the community coordinators directly supervise and oversee our student staff members. So we have um, about 50 current RISD upper class students who live in the residence halls with you um, and work with you throughout the year. So for every floor has a resident advisor or an RA. Um, again, they're upperclassmen. They live there with you and they're really your go-to resource when you're living here. Um, if you have any questions, um, if you're not sure who to go to to talk about something, um, if you, know, you have safety concerns or health issues um, and you need help with it, um, they also do a lot of community development, a lot of programming and social stuff for you as well. Um, and you can see them on the left, that's from this year. Um, and then we also have advocates for inclusion and in residence or what we refer to as heirs. There's one in each area. Um, and they do a lot of social programming and educational programming um, around social identity, equity and inclusion within the residence halls and really trying to create um, a warm and welcoming space that is you know, super celebratory of whatever identity that you bring to that space and bring awareness to it. So our office provides a lot of support systems, a lot of resources and a lot of services, but some of the main ones um, are, we do a lot of social events throughout the year. Um, we work closely with a lot of various offices, but we provide a lot of social events and programs for you. Um, you know, moving away from home, living away from home and your normal support system can be a little scary. And sometimes things happen that you know who to go to back at home, but maybe here you don't. And so we do serve in a 24 seven emergency crisis response. Um, so there's always someone here who is able to help you. Um, so if you are having a health issue or a roommate issue or whatever it be, a pipe burst, whatever it be, um, we have someone on call who can help you um, weekends, evenings, even on holidays. Um, we do a lot of resource referrals. And what this really means is if you have an issue or you need help finding something on campus um, and you don't know who to go to, you can always come by our office, you can ask the RA and we can definitely connect you to the resource on campus. Um, we're kind of, we can kind of, you know, help you navigate where to go on campus. Um, roommate issues, so vast majority of students have roommates on campus. Vast majority of them don't have issues with their roommates, but you know sometimes that happens, um, and that's normal, and that's okay. Um, and so the RA, um, our community coordinators, even myself, we can definitely help you navigate any roommate issues that you might be having. Um, we provide room changes, so if there's an, at any point in time where um, the room is just not what you need anymore, or you're having roommate issues that really you've tried everything and it's just not working out, um, we can definitely do room changes. Um, and then we also provide quite a few work study positions in our office. So if you come to RISD um, and you're looking for a part time role or a job, um, our office is one that does provide work study positions. So what's it like to live on campus when you come here, what can you expect um, of living on campus. Um, so we do a lot of community development on campus and really the heart of everything we do in residence life is relationship building. So helping you connect with other people on campus to find people who have similar interests um, and really find a place that hopefully feels like a home to you. 
Um, and we do that in a lot of ways. Um, so first and foremost, all first year students, when they start during orientation, that very first day that you move in, you have a floor meeting, you get to meet your RA, you go over all the resources, you get to meet everyone else on your floor. Um, and your floor is really one of the small sub communities that you'll have at RISD, and that really begins with that. Um, RAs and AIRs do host a lot of social programs each uh, about once a week or bi-weekly for your floor and for the residence hall that you live in. So there's a whole host of those that are happening constantly. Um, examples could be that we've had in the past have been, um, we had an RA who's really interested in bubble tea and their grandmother makes bubble tea. So they brought their grandmother and they taught the community how to make bubble tea. Um, last week, some first year RAs took their um, floors on tours, walking tours of Providence to get to know some areas, um, study hours. There's a whole host of things that they do. We also host um, as an office community-wide events. Um, so events that are open to that entire area or to the entire campus. Um, for example, the photo that you see on this slide, this is from right after orientation. This was open to all first year students. It was a succulent uh, plant potting um, activity with about 150 students show up. It was free of charge, come get a succulent, put it in a pot um, and then decorate that pot if you would like. Um, tomorrow we're hosting um, the event with dining called Fall Fest, and so it's going to be open to the entire campus, but um, think of anything stereotypical New England, fall activities and food, we're going to do that, there's going to be prizes, there's going to be games, um, so we, we try to host a lot of social fun engaging activities throughout the year. Um, and we're also pretty active on social media. Um, if you haven't already, definitely look into us on Instagram. Um, but we also host quite a few virtual events throughout the year as well. Um, so for example, last year we did an event called the Great Duck Hunt, where we hid um, rubber ducks around campus, gave clues on social media where to find them, students went to find them, they took a photo of it, and then they're entered into raffles to win um, some pretty large prizes. So there's a whole host of ways that you can develop community on campus. Um, for first year students, we also have a program called RISD Launch, which we started this year. Um, and this is within residence life um, and working with a lot of various other offices on campus is providing resources and activities and support directly to first years for first years to support your academic, your social and your personal um, lives. Um, and so we try to bring offices and resources directly into the residence halls for you so that it's as easy um, for you as possible. Um, and we do this throughout the year to help support you and help you um, be as successful as you can in your first year at RISD. So examples of this might be um, a panel of RAs um, talking about which major they selected and things that they thought about when making that decision as you're starting to think about your major. Um, it could be time management workshops at the very beginning of the year to figure out how to transition from you know, high school workload to a college workload and how to navigate that for success. Um, it could also be social equity group conversations. So um, AIRS hosts meetings for various social identities to help you find and build that network and that um, sense of community on campus as well. Um, and then if, if we have any transfers, people potentially interested in trans transferring um, in here, we also have a very similar experience for sophomores um, as well. So you're like, all right, Dan, great, that's all cool. Now, what about the buildings? Um, what do the buildings look like? What comes in a residence hall? What, let's see what that looks like. So um, before we begin, just know that this past summer, we went through and filmed brand new um, tour videos of all of the first year residence halls. And so those are available on our website. Um, you can also find them on our YouTube channel. So if you are interested, um, you can go find those and watch some um, video tours of the residence halls. So we primarily have four residence halls for the first year area. So we have East Hall, Homer Hall, which was just finished being renovated this past summer, Nickerson, um, and North Hall, which is our newest residence hall. Um, all of these are pretty traditional residence halls in the sense that you share a room with someone else. And then there are communal restrooms, kitchens, lounges, um, all of that. Um, all of these buildings are right next to each other. They are centrally located on campus. Um, they are usually referred to as the quad, the first year quad, um, the main dining hall on campus, the fitness center, um, public safety, a lot of resources are centrally located within this hub of buildings. So you are very well located on campus to your classes um, and other resources on campus. So um, 
what comes in a residence hall, what amenities, what common spaces do we have? So each residence hall has laundry. Um, you upload money to your RISD ID and you just swipe it on the machine um, and that allows you to do laundry. Um, there are shared communal kitchens in all the residence halls for you. Um, Workrooms are provided in each of the residence halls um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, we have lounges. Um, all of the first year area also has elevator access. Um, air conditioning and heating is provided. Uh, we also have some meditation, reflection, and pride rooms located within the first year residence halls. Um, and then included in the cost of living on campus is a full meal allotment. So when you're looking at cost of living on campus, um, that includes a full meal plan. Um, you don't have to worry about or think about where's your next meal coming from. You get a full meal plan um, and it's to the dining hall that is centrally located right in the hub of the first year quad. Um, and you'll see these animated GIF videos. These are taken from the housing tours. So this gives you a little insight into the tour videos that are available on our website. Um, so workrooms, this is a, an example photo of the workrooms. Um, so this is one of them. This is in North Hall. Um, so the workrooms in the first year area are pretty large um, and are communal. So if you don't live in North Hall, you still have access to use the workroom in North Hall. Um, they're large open spaces, plenty of outlets, um, plenty of bulletin boards and wall space to hang artwork up and do artwork. We have spray booths um, for proper uh, use of aerosol. Um, we have disposal, uh, proper disposal containers for various materials that you're using. And so this is a really great space to do your work outside of your room. Um, and these spaces are also really great places to meet people and a lot of community development and a lot of bonding um, at RISD takes place you know, in these work rooms. Room, so our rooms on campus. So primarily in the first year area, we have doubles and triples. Um, we do have a few singles. Um, they're not as common, um, but we do have a few, um, but primarily it's doubles and triples. Each room comes with an extra long twin bed and mattress. Um, we also provide micro fridges in the rooms for first year students. So you get a micro fridge with a microwave um, as part of it. And so that's something that you would not need to provide on your own. Um, closet and wardrobes, a bureau, you get a work desk and chair, um, some sort of overhead ceiling light, waste baskets um, and window shades. Um, so again, you can see it kind of in the video of like what comes in there. Um, and here's just a photo of a pretty average room. Um, so this is a double in North Hall. Um, so you'll see pretty bright, pretty airy um, bulletin boards on the walls, ample bulletin board space um, for hanging up work and things like that as well. Um, a common question we get is what are the restrooms like on campus? And I have to say that if I were a student, if I could go back to my undergrad days, I wish I had restrooms like this on all the floors. Um, so, for the vast majority of first year residence halls, each floor has a communal multi occupancy restroom. Um, so, multiple stalls of toilets and multiple stalls of showers. What's really great about these that you can see from the, the photo on the left is that each of these stalls have floor to ceiling wall partitions. Um, so, they're fully private, which is wonderful. Um, each floor also has a single occupancy restroom that also has a shower in that. So if you are uncomfortable or you prefer a little bit more privacy when using the restroom, um, there is a single occupancy restroom on each floor as well. Um, and something to note about all of our restrooms um, in the first year area on campus is that all of them are gender inclusive. What that means is that we do not have separate bathrooms for male or female identifying students. Rather, anyone of any gender expression can use any of the restrooms that you would like on, um, in, in the residence halls. Um, and then finally, a few questions that you might have is, you know, can I select my own roommates? How do we choose rooms? So first year students, you do get to select your own housing. Um, so you get to uh, go in and select from whatever's available. So you can choose a single, a double or a triple. Um, you can also select who your roommates are and pull in roommates. So quite a few students will find roommates online um, or through our housing portal and then pull them into the room. Um, but you can still select housing even if you don't find a roommate. You can easily find a space that has open bed spaces available and choose that. 
Um, and all that information on how to find roommates and how to do room selection comes out typically in the spring um, if you commit to RISD. Um, we also provide a variety of different floor makeups um, for whatever makes you feel most comfortable um, and at ease here at RISD. And so the vast majority of our residence hall floors are mixed gender, meaning that anyone of any gender expression lives on that floor. Um, however, we also do have some single gender floor options that is usually based off of demand. So if you know one year we have 10 people who want that and another year we have 20, um, we try to make that available. Um, I believe this year we have two floors that are gender, um, single gender. We also have gender inclusive floors. And what that means is that um, people, regardless of gender expression and identity, can live with whomever they like on that floor. Um, and so we do have quite a few options available for first year students. Um, and that extends to when you become an upperclassman living on campus. Um, and then if you choose, you know, if RISD is the place for you, um, you apply and you accept and you enroll here, um, the general timeline for housing selection um, is in late spring. So typically May and June is when you are getting this information. We have webinars about how to go through it, how to go through the process, and then you're actively selecting housing um, in your roommate. Um, something to note, because um, I think people think this sometimes, is that uh, when you do room selection, you get a time slot to select your room. Um, those are random and those aren't based off of when you commit to come to RISD. So if you commit to come to RISD today, that does not mean that you get to select housing before someone who commits to come to RISD in March, for example. Um, and so all that information would come out um, in the spring. And so that's a little bit about residence life. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A. Um, we'll address those at the very end of the session today, but now I'll turn it over to Erica to talk a little bit about you know, CSI um, and campus activities on campus. Hi, everybody. Am I sharing? Perfect. Thank you, Dan. Hi, um, and thanks again, Dan. I am going to talk with you briefly about the Center for Student Involvement, which I um, told you briefly before, covers campus activities, leadership development, uh, service, and experiential learning. Um, hold on one second. There we go. It's easier for me to kind of just show you this beautiful montage of previous events that we've done um, and kind of talk through some of the typical offerings um, that we have at RISD. Right now we have over 50 clubs and organizations, active 50 um, clubs and organizations. They are uh, across the gamut uh, that focus on several different areas. The majority of our clubs and organizations right now fo focus on cultural um, or identity based communities. So um, some of our really popular organizations right now are ones like Mango Street, which is our Latinx uh, community, BAD, which is our Black Artists and Designers community, our Korean Student Association, our Queer Student Association, um, and several others. And really those are places for people who hold those identities or who don't and want to learn more to come together to celebrate those communities, participate in cultural holidays and other observances, um, and just to hang out and be in community uh, as, as we are, as we show up here. Um, we have professional or academic related organizations. So things like the landscape, the National Association of Landscape Architects, for example, um, or eShip, which is our entrepreneurial um, upstart program. So think of, um, think of, oh gosh, what's that shark show? The shark show, um, where you bring really cool startup ideas to a panel of both alumni and other folks in um, mostly the ID, the industrial design area, who want to kind of pitch and promote uh, and fund uh, your startup. Shark Thank you, Shark Tank, like the sharks. That's <laughs> sharks. We have a ton of general, general interest organizations. So things like Anime or the Garden Club or RISD Jams, which is um, a pretty awesome collection of all of our musicians on campus who want to play together. We also have club athletics. So right now we have active basketball teams, a ski and snowboard club, ice hockey, fencing, and we even have a surf club in the works. Um, and basically what, what 
we love is that if we don't have what you're looking for, you can just come to some of the advisors in CSI and talk about what it is that you want. And if we don't have it here, we um, also welcome you to join clubs and organizations at Brown University. And if they don't have it there, we'll certainly help to, um, to formulate that, uh, that community for you here. We also offer um, other campus-wide events, some traditionally that our campus looks for every year, things like our Artist Ball, uh, which is a giant, beautiful costume party um, where hundreds of our students show up in their most um, unique and homemade costumes to kind of dance the night away. Things like our lawn party, where we roll grass, sod, out on the street uh, and enjoy lawn games and bands and great food. We offer trips off campus. Um, so, you know, a couple weeks ago we took uh, students indoor kart racing and to throw axes. And um, just last weekend, we sent a full bus around the state of Rhode Island to check out different um, fall-esque experiences, things like apple picking and uh, having lunch at a farm to table uh, farmer's place and um, maple sugaring, if that's a word, maple sugaring. We go bowling uh, and we do other things that our, um, our clubs and organizations and our students ask for. Again, if we don't have it on the schedule and it's something that you're really into, we're happy to help make that happen. Um, we also have student government uh, here where students can be involved in advocating for their peers, either as one of the executive board members, so your traditional president, vice president, that sort of thing, but also in your individual departments. So every department rep has a number of representatives that are voted on by the student body and you work really closely with your department chair and the faculty of your department to advocate and tell um, decision makers at RISD what it is like to be a student in your department and to advocate for the things that you need or um, just to let folks know that you really like what's going on uh, and, to, and to keep it that way. We also um, have several leadership development opportunities that we work with in collaboration with a number of different folks both on and off campus. Right now um, we are in the middle of our RISD leads session which is a speaker series where we find really creative, amazing artists, um, creatives doing amazing work, most often in fields of social justice, but not always, um, who are really using their creative talents uh, as activists and entrepreneurs. So just last week, we welcomed Samantha uh, Herrera um, Ramirez to campus, and she um, has been working with Stacey Abrams for the last year, uh, doing all of her videos to um, to get out the vote in a number of different marginalized communities. It was pretty amazing to hear how, um, you know, her journey started as an undocumented um, student from uh, Mexico. Uh, moving to El Paso when she was six and how now she um, owns a whole studio and is working to really advocate uh, for the communities from which um, she came and is um, most closely with. So that was pretty awesome. You can see the schedule here. Next week we will welcome Ebony Bell, who is the um, founder and editor-in-chief of TAG magazine. So, you know, Ebony, as a creative, um, realized that there were not spaces where queer women were in print. And so she brought together some colleagues and they made that happen. She now is an amazing LGBTQIA advocate who um, works in the Atlanta area. Google her, she's amazing. Um, I'm really excited that Sal Flores will be joining us to talk about his documentary, Walk of the Immigrants, and you can see um, on and on again, some of our students actually recommended uh, some of these uh, speakers. And so what RISD Leads does is it brings together a small group of our community. It's a really intimate setting where we have dinner with these people and, and they'll tell us what sort of their current projects are. And those are really, really important to hear where they are now. But what's most important is that our students have some time uh, with these folks to learn about their journey and how um, often many of them from an art school background um, sort of struggled with what they thought they wanted to do and what their realities were and really um, were creative to kind of blaze their own trail and do their own thing. You can see it also extends into the spring. We have some um, really amazing people working for uh, Asian American um, advocacy in uh, in local and state politics and uh, and so it really runs runs the whole gamut. 
Um, we also uh, maintain and support the Student Fitness Center on campus. Like I said, our club athletics uh, are part of the Center for Student Involvement. Most of them are club. We have one that competes intercollegiately, that's cycling. Uh, and their home is the Student Fitness Center. You can see pictures here. Uh, we recently renovated the center a number of years ago, a couple years ago, um, and it's beautiful. And we um, really haven't had any waits for any of the equipment. Students can come in and hop on a machine. You can see they're pretty much the most up-to-date um, equipment that, that you can access. We also offer um, small group fitness classes. Um, both you can see that we have been utilizing some outdoor spaces as well, like is there any other better place to do yoga on a Saturday morning, but we also have three studios in the fitness center, which we will host classes in, but also that our students are able to reserve, and so they can work out sort of in small groups if that's what they like, or they can just reserve a studio on their own. Uh, and the last thing I'll talk to you about is our community engagement programs. We know that our students are um, very connected to community. Many of you have been working with community nonprofits and other organizations for a number of years, and that's an important part of who you are, and uh, we want to make sure that we nurture that when you're here. So we offer a number of different experiences. Again, the caveat is if we don't, uh, offer something that you're particularly interested in, let's have that conversation to see what we can do. But some of the easy ways to get involved in our community engagement and service learning programs are through our alternative spring break program, which is a trip that students fully plan and run themselves. Um, obviously during spring break where they work with um, a nonprofit, uh, usually uh, not necessarily all that local so there's a little bit of travel involved so we see new places and we meet new people um, and we've done some pretty amazing trips recently um, we worked uh, with the National uh, Forest Service to do some wayfinding for them so we created some um, some art actually in the forest to move people away from endangered species uh, habitats but to still recognize that those species were there so it let people know what was going on in the area but also got them out of the way and so our students got to learn about um, that work but also apply their talents and their tremendous skills to helping um, that local community which was pretty amazing um, we offer a pre-orientation service experience. We call that POSE. Uh, and that is um, a couple of days before orientation starts. We will invite you to come to campus early and we will introduce you to a number of the nonprofit community organizations that we work most closely with. And so over a number of days, you will meet different organizations and you will learn how they work. Uh, and then you'll do some um, short service projects with them. Those community partners that we introduced you in and pose are also who we partner more long term with in our leadership and community engagement fellowship called LAYS. And that's a way that you can earn up to $1,500 a semester for working closely with a nonprofit for 300 hours on a project. And so that is a really, um, that's a detailed, uh, serious commitment that a student makes um, to one of our nonprofit partners where the partner and our student in conjunction develop a reciprocal plan and project. So something that really meets the needs of the organization and can tap into the student's interests and skill sets. Um, so some of the projects that we've done in LACE is we've worked with Butler Hospital um, to help develop some art therapy programs. We've worked for an organization called Common Cause, which um, works on voter engagement in the city and helped to get some information to parts of Providence that have really low voter turnout. Um, we've worked on campus, so for example, we have utilized the LACE Fellowship to talk with uh, folks who deal with RISD financial accessibility and making sure that the information that we have, both in the, on the web and in print, um, are accessible, that folks understand the different financial policies and the resources that they have here, because it's really critical to a student's success that they do. Uh, we worked with the Southside Cultural Land Center. 
um, to work with community gardens that were set aside uh, for refugee resettlement programs. So obviously agriculture is tremendously important to, um, to the success of refugee resettlement. And so our students worked to help both fundraise to get more community garden space, but also um, to help uh, take what was grown from the refugees in those community garden spaces and find places that those crops could be sold and helped, um, you know, helped to close that loop for them as well. I want to draw your attention to uh, the place where you can find more of this information, and that's involved.risd.edu. If you go there, um, you can search for uh, different events that are listed publicly. Please know that a lot of our events are not listed publicly, um, so the events that you may see on that website could be limited uh, depending on what you're looking for, but you can search for all of the currently active organizations. So if anything that I said today sort of sparked an interest in you, you can go to the site, click under organizations, you can search or just scroll, you can look by those topical areas that I told you about. And you can also um, click and send a message to the individual student leaders that run that organization. So if you wanna know a little bit more about what they're doing, if you wanna know how to join them once you've made the commitment to join RISD, you can go ahead um, and do that. There's also sections for news uh, and and other, other ways to connect um, with student engagement. And then finally, I will ask that you subscribe yourself to Word Out, which is our weekly student newsletter. There you will get um, pretty much a good full listing of all of the student uh, involvement events that are happening for the week. You can also follow us on, on Instagram at RISD underscore uh, CSI. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. I can't see if there are any in the chat, but I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Antonio. We go yay the camera took forever to get back to me yeah so awesome thank y'all thank y'all so we will switch over to a QA session uh let's see if we have some questions that came in uh the first question um what are the social events like they're super fun they're they're really super fun they're just exactly what you wanted and um no, I mean, they're, they're really uh, varied and they're really unique. And Dan, you know, pipe in here because um, Dan's, Dan's student leaders run a lot of them themselves. And really, um, we hear from students about the things that they want to do. And then we get together with them and we make them happen. So I think, um, I think there are some really large ones that are really fun and everybody goes to. And there are some really small, intimate ones. And that makes sense for what those are. Dan, other things to add? Yeah, I would just I would just say it depends on what you're looking for as well. Um, I think RISD provides opportunities for social engagement. For like if you're looking for like a bigger event or something catered to like an interest of yours, um, or if you just want more of like a, a low key like social event or something, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, yeah, there's plenty of opportunities I've never heard. I think the thing I always hear from students here is there's always something to do at RISD um, with us through our departments um, or gallery openings or lecture series. There's always something. Um, and so you can definitely find whatever um, suits your interest. Another question came in. Um, is there a football slash soccer club? Yeah, I forgot to mention that right now. Um, we're running our Midnight Soccer Club, which is awesome. So every Thursday night, um, they get on a bus and they go to the two indoor fields about 15 minutes away, about 1030, and they play till about midnight. So yeah, right now that is, um, that's our soccer option. Uh, and with New England weather, it's really the best, most consistent option, and it's the one that the students prefer. Cool. I see there's a question. Um... Is there a winter term? Um, is housing provided at additional um, piece, additional price? <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. <laughs> so that's a great question. There are, so we have fall semester, you have a winter session for, was it five weeks? Um, and then spring semester. So your housing, you pay per semester. So fall semester, that price you're paying covers half of winter session and then spring covers half of the other winter session. Um, 
So yeah, we do have housing for all of that. So when you select housing, that's your housing for the entire academic year. Um, so from September through May, whenever you have to move out, um, we remain open for spring break and Thanksgiving break. Um, the only one that we close, uh, actively close for is winter break, which is about two to three weeks um, between the end of fall and beginning of winter session. But we always, if there are students who generally cannot travel home for that, we usually work with them to keep them on the housing, keep them in housing for that. Um, and there usually is a, a small fee attached to that. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Let's see, I joined the conversation late and apologize um, if this topic has been covered. Is there a shuttle service to the airport and or train station? I can certainly answer that. Um, there are a number of different private shuttles uh, to the airports, um, and we also have a number of different transportation options that are available for students. For one, the train station is easily within walking distance, but we also do have RISD Rides, which is a free uh, on-campus and local shuttle system that students can use. It's similar to an Uber. They use an app and they can pick two locations. Uh, RISD students also have access to the Rhode Island public transportation um, system, RIPTA, and so using their uh, RISD ID, they can take a bus that would get them to uh, the uh, Providence Airport um, easily enough, and if they're going to Boston, um, most students will either take the train or they may decide that they just want to take a, a private shuttle and, and book that as well. So uh, while we don't have a formal um, shuttle system, we have a number of different tools that students utilize to get around. Great. Uh, somebody asked 300 hours per semesters for LACE. We let winter session be a part of that semester since students have a little bit more free time in winter session. So it's about 10 to 15 hours a week for the full fellowship amount. Um, but depending on where a student is in their own skill development, working with community engagement, we are very happy to lower that and lower the fellowship amount so that a student can dock into the program and do what they are able to do based on with their skill level, their experience, and the time commitment that they have. Okay. Because of the close proximity, proximity, does RISD and Brown students mingle, um, partner on projects, or have organized events? all the time, all the time. In fact, I forgot to mention that our students also can use their fitness center as well, the Nelson fin Fitness Center, and that they often do. Um, but especially those cultural organizations, like I was talking about, they bring the communities of RISD and Brown together to celebrate. And like I said, their students are part of our student organizations and ours theirs. So absolutely. Awesome. Uh, can students have cars on campus? Yeah, so I definitely want to answer that. Um, Providence is not a uh, super friendly city for uh, vehicles, including for staff trying to drive in and park. Uh, we do not have any student parking on campus specifically for students. So uh, if a student were to have a car on campus, they would need to basically pay for private parking through overnight lots. Uh, it would get pretty expensive fast. Um, we really try to encourage students to think about their transportation in other ways, both taking advantage of the systems that we have available. Uh, that also includes things like zip cars on campus, which we have, um, and you know, it's 2021, ride share is really commonly available and, and all around us. So most students find that they really don't need a car on campus, and that tends to be the best decision for most of them. Okay. Uh, how safe is campus? It's a great question. Um, <laughs> I, I can try to answer that one. Um, I would say RISD and RISD and Brown are right next to each other, and I would say um, as a campus as a whole, we're relatively safe. Um, I think it is important to acknowledge that we are in an urban environment um, compared to other schools. Like I went to undergrad in the middle of a cornfield, uh, <laughs> very different environment. 
Um, but we do have 24 seven public safety um, on campus. Um, all of our residence halls and academic buildings have car to access. So people who do not have, so no one off the, you know, just walking off the street and come into the residence halls or anything like that. You do have to have car to access for that. Um, we do have blue lights around campus, which is pretty common on most college campuses that you can call for help at any moment. Um, but I will say our public safety is, is really good and very strong. Um, they're pretty present around campus. Their vehicles are pretty well known um, on campus. Um, they get to know students very well. They walk around, you know, residence halls and academic buildings and say hi and, you know, bring food to students. And um, they do a lot of property registration and things like that. They're open 24-7, 365. Um, and so we have a lot of those services available. And again, residence life is also on call. So there's always someone uh, on call um, to help um, if need be. Great, 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 great. Another question that just came in, um, are animals allowed in the dorms and how much uh, yeah. personalization are we able to do in our rooms, posters, tapestries, et cetera? Cool, great questions. Um, so first and foremost, we don't allow pets in the residence halls. We do allow fish um, in a small little tank, uh, but we don't allow just pets. Um, we do allow emotional support animals and service animals. Um, for those students who have emotional support animals and or service animals, they do have to submit um, a medical accommodation for that um, and be approved for that. Um, and then they would be allowed to bring them on campus. Um, Service, there's certain restrictions on service animals versus ESAs, emotional support animals. So you do have to follow that documentation and guidelines. Um, and we do make sure that you are, you know, taking care of it, taking care of them properly. Um, so yeah, emotional support animals, service animals are allowed if you have an approved accommodation, um, but we don't allow pets. Um, and then oh, personalization. You can personalize your room however you want to. Um, you can, we have students who go all out. I have seen hunting lodge themes in our residence halls. I have, like you can usually tell what major people are based on how their room is decorated. Um, nothing can hang from the ceiling. Um, so if you go to all of our polys on our website, you can kind of see it. Um, you can definitely have things on your walls. We always say nothing more than 30% of your walls can be covered just for fire safety reasons. Nothing can hang from the ceiling, but otherwise um, it's pretty fair game what you can bring in. But there's a list online of, um, a list of like what not to bring um, and things that you should consider bringing. We're fortunate that all of our residence halls and houses are fully um, sprinklered, uh, which does give us a little peace of mind for things like tapestries and, and posters where some schools are much more restrictive of that due to the fire risk. Um, we have that extra safety net of, of sprinklers to allow a little bit more personalization here. Um, yeah, y'all let me know if I've missed a question because I'm, I'm trying to... There was one. Um, are there any restrictions on campus where one lives? Um, so there are. So first year, we have three main areas of campus. Um, they're all pretty close to each other. Um, and the only difference really is the type of housing experience you get. Um, so you have your first year area. So first year students have to live in the first year area. Um, and so that's East, North, um, Nickerson, or Homer Halls. That's very like communal living, um, much, much larger work rooms are in those spaces um, because you don't necessarily get work rooms um, in your academic classes. And so we provide more of that in the residence hall experience for you. Um, we then have the sophomore area. So sophomores live in suites in 15 West um, and uh, the Hill Houses, which are small communal, um, they're all colonial homes, about 15 to 30 students. Um, and then upperclassmen, so juniors, seniors, fifth year seniors, um, and grad students can live in the apartments or lofts in 15 West um, or in the colonial apartments or Dwight apartments um, area as well. And so that's all listed on the website. Like you can go through like what class year you are and see what the housing options are for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak a bit about the mental health services on campus? Yeah. yeah. Um, I can, uh, so yeah, we do have counseling, um, counseling and psychological services. They're called CAPS. Um, they are available. Um, typically the first 
two weeks of each semester, they have open walk-in hours where you can just set up an appointment where you can just walk in and see someone. Um, they accept a lot of the insurances. They accept the Christie insurance. Um, they will meet with you for a few times if you need uh, more steady and prolonged, um, uh, a more prolonged experience with a counselor. They will set you up with someone in the community after the first few sessions. Um, if that's not something that you can do, they will work with you um, uh, on campus. Um, we also provide emergency counseling after hours as well. So if you are experiencing an emergency on a weekend or late at night, we do have a protocol phone number where you can call someone and be immediately um, connected to a counselor on call. Um, and they work very closely with our counselors on campus as well. Um, but they're great. We, we love count, uh, CAPS. Um, and they also, um, you know, currently offer counseling modalities of both in-person and uh, and telehealth, uh, um, telecounseling. Um, and I think it's also important to note that our public safety officers, uh, most of whom are also EMTs, are also trained in um, uh, mental health first aid as well. So they're trained to um, work with students who may be in a, a crisis or anyone who's in a crisis, whether they're a student or um, somebody else that uh, is, is in our um, campus area. So. Uh, I lost my place. Uh, is there a curfew of any sort um, for the rooms and facilities available? There's not, not for rooms. Um, certainly um, part of what Dan talked about is time management and sleep is part of that. And it's an extremely important piece. So we certainly don't want to encourage students to stay up all night, but there's no curfew within the, within the residence halls. Um, that said, there are um, in some cases, uh, specific studio hours for uh, different locations and not all locations are, are open, you know, for, you know, the entirety of the night. In fact, I'm not sure how many are open at this point for the entirety of the night. I think we've tried to set a little bit of boundary around that. Okay. Uh, one student asked about um, what kind of bags would you recommend um, we have uh, to carry our stuff around, specifically for illustration students? Big ones. <laughs> the RISD <laughs> store has all kinds of portfolio bags. Um, everything from the little guys to the giant ones. And you can usually tell the illustration folks by um, you know, the ones that are carrying around the, uh, the giant poster size bags. But uh, the RISD store is, uh, is a great resource for all things um, art related, uh, as well as RISD swag. I know there was a question I think I saw about um, RISD swag online. The RISD store does have an online um, site and I believe uh, there is some product that can be ordered there. Uh, with some RISD uh, logos and stuff like that on it. Okay. One student asked, uh, lost my place again. Is there specific regulations in terms of switching with roommates? Um, like we, uh, like do we need a specific reason, like not getting along or can we simply request to switch because of clashing lifestyles, discomfort at night, like snoring, et cetera? Um, good question. So there's really no, like you can request a room change at any moment in time. It could be for whatever you want. It could be, I want a room. I want a single, I want a room with more light down to, you know, hey, like, my roommate, and I are, my roommate and I are just not getting along. Um, the hard part is it's really based off of availability. So do we have another space open to move you to? Um, and are you next on the list? Um, so we do take into consideration the severity of the request at times. So, you know, someone, for example, who has a, a medical accommodation and, and needs a certain type of room, um, they would most likely get a room change before someone who's like, mm, I just, just want a room, you know, in a different building. Um, so yeah, you can ask for whatever reason you want. We'll work with you. We definitely try to meet with you to figure out what it is you're looking for. Um, and if we can make it happen, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, usually you just have to wait a little bit to, to see if something opens up. Uh, there's the, uh, how many meals are provided per day and at what time? 
So for um, students that live in the first year area um, and generally all students that live in the sophomore area, their meal plan is, is essentially as follows. They have unlimited access to what we call the Met, which is our main dining hall. They can go in there every 10 minutes if they want, all day long, as long as it's open, uh, in and out. There's no specific meal times other than you know, the traditional kind of everybody shows up at certain times of the day, but they can go in as much as they want. In addition to that, they also have um, one or two swipes uh, in an other facility. So we have the Portfolio Cafe, the Jolly Roger Cafe. Uh, we have um, a marketplace, the water market that sells things, and they can either utilize their, their swipe or um, the additional points um, that they get with their meals. There's also a, a, a campus tender called RISD Bucks. Um, first year students uh, get um, kind of some seed RISD Bucks. That's good for laundry and vending, as well as um, it can be used for purchasing additional food. Um, but essentially, you can eat all you want um, if you're a first year or sophomore student on our campus um, throughout the day uh, in the Met, which is where most students eat. And then if you want to go somewhere else, uh, you have those additional swipes. And then for our upper class students, they have uh, a more sort of partial meal plan because they live in apartments and they have the ability to cook and their, um, their options vary a little bit. But again, um, there are kind of explanations on our website for how that works. And it does tend to change a little bit year to year, but um, it's pretty, pretty standard. And uh, did we already answer the question on how safe is campus? Yes. Okay, okay. So it looks like there's no, oh, uh, there's a question that came in. Uh, can you please elaborate more on what RISD bucks are? Oh yeah, so RISD bucks is essentially like a, a dollar for dollar uh, exchange, which works both on our campus as well as a few participating vendors. So there's CBSs and some uh, restaurants that are local that will also accept RISD bucks. The benefit of RISD bucks versus cash is of course, um, it is something that's kind of backed by the institution. If you lose your ID card, it can be replaced and you don't lose that money, um, things like that. It is also the only type of uh, tender that uh, the vending machines, well, I'm not sure about the vending machines, but definitely the laundry machines. It's the only type of tender they accept. Um, and so it's just kind of a good um, form of currency for on-campus transactions. Okay. Uh, uh, what kind of utilities and stores are nearby campus? Food, shopping, department stores, entertainment like movie theaters? A lot. <laughs> uh, I used to live on campus and I miss living on campus because you could walk to so much. Um, you're a few blocks from downtown, so you have a lot of restaurants. Providence is known for its food and its restaurants. Um, a lot of local stores, a lot of coffee shops. You're very close to Fair Street, which is kind of like the college town for College Hill for Brown and RISD. So a lot more restaurants and stores. Uh, the Providence Mall is a short walk away. So if you want to go to the mall, um, for example, a lot of our students go there for the Apple store for any like technical support or supplies they need. Um, and then as I think Antonio or Kevin said this, but we're maybe like a five minute walk to the train station. Um, and so you can take the train, uh, go to, from the train station to Boston. Boston's about, you know, 55 minutes away on the train. You can take it to New York City. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of options. Uh, there's a Whole Foods right down the street, <laughs> Staples. Um, so as many Starbucks as you would like, I feel like there's like four Starbucks like within a half mile radius of campus. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. <laughs> we have a, another question that just came in. Um, do you have any dance clubs? The answer is yes. There are dance clubs. <laughs> <laughs> not many, but there are there. Um, not RISD dance clubs per se, not really dance, um, yeah. but there are definitely <laughs> clubs. <laughs> we, we have like the artist ball, right? Yeah, artist ball can be kind of like a club. A club, but yeah, if you're talking about a dance club, like yeah, no, uh, RISD doesn't have one, but there are some in the downtown area. Uh, let's see, um, do you recommend tablets 
um, iPads or computers, MacBook, or does it depend on your major? I'm not sure what you're asking. You're asking what kind of computer you need to bring with you to school, Christina? That's kind of the gist of it. Uh, yeah. Um, there is a laptop program through RISD. Um, if you have your own computer, your iPad, you can bring that, especially like if you want to write a paper late at night before the computer lab closes. Um, you are thinking, you have to think about computer lab hours, um, but many students will bring their own computer. Um, many students will ask for a computer for their graduation gift um, to send off to college. Uh, but if you have a, you know, a computer that's still kicking, I would say just bring that. But there's computer labs all over campus. Uh, how do you start it? You know, uh, let's let's that be the last question because um, a lot of these are now becoming um, more questions about. Um, oh, so dance club. <laughs> Clarified um, for dancers, <laughs> modern dad jazz. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I like where our heads are at. We do, it isn't currently active. And that's pretty typical of, of, an, of a club like that, right? It requires people who dance and who wanna be dancing here to get together and reactivate that club. So the answer is yes. I, what I um, know is that our students who are interested in that organization found a community over at Brown. Um, and they're working together with some different dance instructors up there that we didn't have at RISD. So it just, you know, it depended on the students and what type of dance. I don't know that off the top of my head, what kind of dance they are, um, what kind of dance team um, that is, but the skill level and the instruction were what was best for our students over there. Um, starting a club is really easy. It often starts with a conversation um, with one of us and saying, you know, I'm really into this thing. Uh, and I miss it and I want to know if it's here. And so we will say, what's that thing? And tell me what that looks like. And um, oftentimes it is here and we just have really creative names for our organization. And so it might not be that intuitive um, that the thing that you're into is actually the RISD whatever club. And so we make that connection. If not, again, we'll, we'll um, show you the organizations that are available at Brown. Uh, because we find that yeah, it's it's just a better um, and more healthy community um, to sort of share resources and activity and interest that way. Uh, but if but if it isn't at Brown and it isn't here, we have two times a year where we open up an application process. We ask you know to, for you to tell us um, your wildest dreams of what that club looks like and what it looks like most successful. We figure out together if we can make that happen for you. We have you meet with a group of students who make the final determination on whether or not. Uh, that club or organization is a right fit for us. Uh, most times it is. And then we help you with that transition process so that whether or not you particularly have had any leadership experience, whether or not you know how to start a club, we know how to do that and we can help to support you uh, in that. So it's a really easy process. It's really individual um, and there's lots of support for you here. Cool. Yeah, so we'll let that be the last question. I wanna thank all of our presenters. Um, for giving us so much information about housing and student life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, hope um, everyone in attendance found this informative, um, insightful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us um, in admissions, but also uh, would it be okay for prospective students to reach out to your departments? Just this once. <laughs> Hear that, folks? Yep. So um, feel free to reach out to the Residence Life Office and to Center for Student Involvement. I will actually stay on a little longer to answer all the questions in regards to um, the application, because uh, I can just knock those out very quickly. Um, but again, I'm going to stay on for a little bit. Uh, but, um, but the session. Hi, is Antonio. Y'all take care. Yeah. Thank you all again. Thank you. Okay.